Hi, my name is Nicholas Patrick. I'm a professional cinematic composer, and today I'm going to be walking you through a rescore I recently did. First, I'm going to play the video and give you a sense of what the movie is, kind of narrate and walk with, without any music, and then we'll play it again with the music, and then I'll walk through and explain my, my choices. Okay, so this particular short film, it's kind of a Pixar, Disney kind of short film called Destiny. Um, it's kind of a Groundhog's Day gimmick. If you've ever seen the movie Groundhog's Day where he wakes up and the same thing keeps happening, except in this one, he's, t he's stuck in a loop and each time he starts over, he can see the previous version of himself and all the decisions they've made and then they start to pile up. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, so we're going to watch it silently and I'm going to narrate just a little bit to give you some of my impressions. So we, we start on this clock, which turns out to be pretty central to what's going to happen here. So this is our main character, our hero, if you will. <laughs> he is a pretty content guy, I, I gather. Uh, uh, very organized, and, and he has this this strange obsession with time, right? So you see this, this one clock is off, right? And that, that bothers him. He fixes it. Look at that smile. <laughs> um, this is a silent film, meaning there's no dialogue. So, you know, we're getting all the emotional cues from what's, you know, actually facial expressions and, and what's going on. Um, see that right there, that this guy has his life down to the second. He could put his little briefcase out there and catch the toast in the air. See him stop right here, waiting for the clock to tick. That's, that's, again, and it brings him some kind of, I don't know, satisfaction. Seems like a pretty happy guy, even with his OCD. And then this, this, his broken clock, that, that just displeases him to no end, distracts him, and he dies. He wakes up, thinking it was a dream, a nightmare, right? And we see the clock again, that is key. But, oh, what is going on? So he he, he knows that's him, or does he? Because, look, he's sneaking around in his own house. Like, can he see me? Is that me? Right? He's, he's tiptoeing, hoping that he doesn't see himself. Right, and then he hides, watching, and then he notices right here, right? He should have seen him there, right? In, in that moment, he figures out, he, he, he can't see me. And now he knows what's going to happen. See, that, that door interacted with him. It, it, it shoved him down, and he was helpless to stop himself. So... It, he hasn't learned the rules yet, but he can interact with things. He just doesn't know what. Now, he he wakes up a little more panicked this time, and he has some idea of what's going on, but he's he's definitely still confused. He shores himself up there. I'm going to handle something about this, and he, he tries to swipe the box. He's like, I'm going to put a stop to this, and he, he he's starting to learn the rules. He can't interact with himself, right? And um, he knows what's coming. He haven't figured it out yet. He's trying to save his own life. Now, here's another another inanimate object he can interact with. He's, he's starting to figure out the rules of this weird time loop vortex. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to pull it off. Now he's waking up a little more panicked. You see, this time he notices the clock has been slipping. The time is off. He's late. He's, he rushes to catch up with his himself to stop him from dying, falls down the stairs, and then is helpless to do anything. Now, he wakes up extremely panicked. It is This is a full-blown nightmare. He's being tortured by all the, the clicks of the, uh, the ticking of the clock, and he zeroes in on this one as, as if it's the bad guy. And then if it wasn't already unusual... Something even more magical happens, and time slows down. The panic is gone, and he's just, just in, in a state of, what is going on? Wonder, sees himself 
slowly falling down the stairs. Comes outside, right? Those are all the previous attempts of him saving his own life. He looks at himself, and, and then he, he, he takes in the beauty of this sunset. He just kind of lets it wash over him, and he finds calm and peace in this moment. And then you can see, hear, hear the gears in his head ticking. He gets an idea. He knows he can interact with something, so he just reaches up and closes it. He doesn't know what's going what, what just happened? What just happened? And he saved his own life. Okay, so that is the short film, Destiny. I think it's pretty cute. Now I'm going to play it again all the way through with the music. I'm not going to talk. You guys just take it in, um, analyze it, critique it, make fun of it if you like. And then we're going to discuss why I did what I did. Now, you know, it might help if I wasn't an idiot and turn the sound on. All right, let's try again.
Hopefully you're still here with me. So I started the queue with a little kind of Lemony Snicket's magical foreshadowing. So we're zoomed in on the clock here. And what I do in that moment is introduce the what would normally be a through line um it's it, for those of you who don't know a through line is a melody that that shows up periodically through a film um you, it's it's the best composers do it. it it creates this sense of familiarity and and it ties the film together it makes it seem like it's this one cohesive story then little ideas kind of just randomly spread it around. So you want to kind of revisit your idea. It's called a through line. I did not do a through line on this one. I did a through motif. I don't, I've never heard anyone say that before, but it's essentially what it is. So uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the decisions. Where did I put that keyboard? Okay, this thing is laggy. So please forgive me. Wow, that is a serious delay there. Well, we're just gonna roll with it. Okay, so um, it's Lydian. So Lydian sounds, oh man, that delay is bad. Bear with me. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. So it's, it's very back to the future. Um, it, it it has a magical and a mysterious quality to it. Um, uh, I, Lydian, I, I find, is very useful. So I plug this, this motif in and as many spots as I can without beating over the head. Um, and what I will do to keep it interesting and keep reinventing it is I will play it in... in different instruments from time to time sometimes the strings will do a version of it sometimes the flute will do it um, the piano um, does it the most it's the most recognizable it's kind of the anchor point for this motif um, I all I, so I change keys with it and I also um, I will adapt it where I will keep the rhythmic motif and change the notes uh, or I will keep the notes and change the rhythm I, I, I keep using this as an anchor and it reinvents itself all over the place but not so far away from the original that it sounds totally foreign um okay so that's enough about that i will point out occasionally like oh here's here's where the 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 motif is there's another motif and i i i, I don't place them randomly i pl place them strategically uh to help give the audience cues about what's going on so let's get rid of this Oh, I didn't switch the thing over. I'm sorry. You you guys didn't see the keyboard at all. Um, I'm sure you guys know what Lydian is. If you don't, it's just a quick YouTube video. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna press forward. Let me switch this over to the project window. I'm sorry about that. I I've never done this before, so uh, there's there's gonna be a couple couple of bumps along the way. I hope you'll forgive me. And okay, so. Um, actually, before I play it, uh, I'm just going to talk about my decision. Why big band jazz? Um, first, um, the genre aside, it's my observation is, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I, I think there's essentially two types of film scoring. Um, and you can blend the lines a little bit, but it's either underscore or a needle drop. And that might not be the right terminology. So a needle drop is like a reference to a record. Um, and, and a needle drop, just a, a song plays, right? And the song, while it may be effective for the, for the movie, it doesn't actually care what's going on in the film. So it has to be used in a place where there's I don't know, not a lot of hit points that are needed, right? You don't need to emphasize this moment or that moment in the movie. Um, you know, montages are, are pretty, pretty typical. Okay, so 
um, there is a needle drop and then there's underscore. So my the way I use the word underscore, underscore reacts to what's happening on the screen, right? Um, it is dancing and breathing in real time uh, with what's happening. Now, it's not Mickey Mousing, not every moment at least. I mean, cartoons, you can Mickey Mouse a little bit. Um, Mickey Mousing means you're, um, you're musically copying what's on on the on the screen to such a degree that it's a carry it's cartoonish it's silly um but it's that's not an insult it's just a style uh however underscore let me get back to it 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 lives and breathes right so i started with with needle drop um of course it's not a popular song it is uh, a big band jazz uh, piece that I put together. Uh, why did I pick big band jazz? Um, I'm just going to play this a little and talk. Maybe I'll turn this down just a hair. All right. So why did I pick big band jazz? Um, for a few reasons. So one, it's familiar. So in these Pixar kind of shorts, um, these Pixar kind of movies, you know, this cartoon, there's a strong association with kind of a swing, happy, upbeat jazz, right? Um, it started with Toy Story. If you remember, uh, You Got a Friend in Me. Now, it's not jazz like some people might think, but it is big band It's big band jazz. It's, it's fun. It's got a bit of a, a swing time to it. So the reason I chose big band jazz is because... The reason I chose Big Band Jazz is because I wanted to start the emotion out in a high place, right? I mean, what we're getting from the the picture is this is this is a pretty happy guy, a little obsessed with time, but he, he seems to have his stuff together. And look, look, that order brings a smile to his face. This is a happy guy. So I went with something upbeat. And again, um, a needle drop doesn't react right it all it does is set the mood it is typically one emotion that's it and all we have here is yay yeah everything is all right um and i chose everything is all right um so that the at the point where he gets hit by the bus it would be even more shocking so this is also misdirection so it, it will be that much more effective if you notice, when the bus hits, I cut the music hard. Right? So, see, again, underscore, uh, I'm sorry, needle drops, they they just set the tone. They, they don't interact with the, with the movie. They just set the tone. Um, they're kind of fun or they're kind of dour or they're kind of sad, you know, whatever. They really have just one emotion. Um, the familiarity point, I'm going to readdress that just for a moment. Familiar is good. Of course, people want to, uh, I would say pe people should strive to make something new and something unique. Um, but we're pretty far along in, in cinematic art these days. And it's, it's hard to really step so far out of the box that it will be, listenable you know you start to get into atonal weirdness and and people like this is just so far off the beaten path i don't even know what this is familiar is good familiar sets sets them uh them being the audience at ease um of course you don't want to beat them over the head variety is is also good but familiar is good so i i i might be belaboring that point i'm sorry uh, okay um i'm gonna move on so, uh, so again, two gears, there's needle drop and underscore. So this is the only moment that, no, that's not true. Um, I, I actually, I, I go back to just setting the mood uh, when the sunlight washes over him for a brief moment. Um, but every other moment in this picture, I went with underscore, which reacts with what's happening in real time. I probably over explained that. Please forgive me. Let me find the moment where he, where he wakes up. 
All right, so he's getting hit by the bus. All right, so that is the motif right there, except I played it rhythmically different. It's the same notes. There it is again. So each time something kind of odd happens, I chime in. Okay, so, so this is, uh, there it is again. All right, this is kind of spy music. So he, why did I go with this? Why did I go with spy music? Because he, he's sneaking around and it's a cartoon, right? <laughs> Um, let me back up a little. So I introduced the motif to, to associate it with something odd, something otherworldly happened. Again, this, this is, this is lighthearted sneaking around music. He doesn't know what's going on, right? He doesn't know if whoever this other person is, he thinks it's himself. Can he see me? I'm building tension here a little bit, right? He, you see, he hides. Now this this moment right here, right? I change to a three, four time signature and I go with kind of a Edward Scissorhands, Danny Elfman vibe because he figures something out in the moment, right? He, he doesn't know what's happening, but he's starting, he will start to learn the rules of this strange time vortex prison loop that he's in. Um, and in this moment, he realizes that he can't see himself, right? Now, that might not be a huge revelation, but it's his first revelation. And I pair that with, um, again, that Danny El It's spooky and mysterious, but not scary. I mean, uh, Danny Elfman's really just a master at that. You know, the the, the uh, vibraphone and the choir just just usher in that, that um, I don't know, dream theater type of type of spookiness um all right, let me go back here let me back up just a little bit all right so he ducks right because he still doesn't know the rules and i will revisit that theme again later when he figures out something else you're hearing the motif Bum, right, he's still there. All right, so he's a little more panicked now, and I've I've introduced uh, um, some mallets underneath uh, to have a bit of a rhythm. All right, so he there is this is his what this is his second pass. So he still doesn't quite know what's going on, uh, but he shores himself up in a moment, and there's a bit of. There's a moment of determined. I'm I'm gonna fix this, right? I'm gonna put put stop to this noise. Let me find it again. Oh, I forgot to explain this. So yeah, I'm raising the tension here with rhythm and dissonance. That's why I went with that. All right, so so still a bit of myst mystery mystery. There's a little rhythm in it now. See him shore himself up. He's like, I'm going to go stop this. And here we hear the, the kind of Danny Elfman tune again because he just learned another rule of this world, right? He can't interact with himself. Now, there, there's a reason that I did that. Um, familiar, again, repetition and familiar is good. You don't want to beat them over the head with it, but uh, it... it it ties the film together. So the first time he learned that uh, he's kind of a ghost in in this in this weird prison loop that he's in, uh, and he he learned even more rules. He can't interact with himself. See, wait, let me back up just a hair. This thing jumps around. Yeah. Now, in a moment, he's going to slam his face against the window, like, trying to see how much time he has. And, right, so I, 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 tr I almost truncate that piece, that Danny Elfman 3-4, do, 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 do. I, it, when it ends, I cut it off hard with um, a quick um, uh, horn crescendo to, you know, raise the tension level. To um, This might be a little Mickey Mousing, actually. 
uh, but it still definitely falls under underscore. Man, forgive me. I've never done uh, an ex- uh, a walkthrough before, so uh, figuring out how to do this smoothly. Okay. That, oh, this is the first time I backed up too far. This is the second time we hear it. See how much time we have. I introduce a little rhythm and a little tension, a little mystery. Now he's learned something else, right? And that's just me. That's me singing. I needed something there, so what I did was a uh, there's a tear. I did kind of a caricature of a country song uh, with a few guitar chords. So <laughs> there's a tear in my beer, and now I'm crying. Uh, just something to cut to to ju- just to just to just to pose. Okay, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Why did I go with bum 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 bum? Um, uh, it, it's just literally raising raising the tension. So each pass um, is raising the tension a little. So the first pass, uh, it was all confusion and mystery, uh, right? Like he's literally sneaking around, like. The, the stakes aren't high. The second pass, um, it's still a little bit of mystery, but the tension raised. So I'm steadily raising the tension on each pass. Um, he finally thinks he, he's, you know, got to where he, he, he can save his life. And, and uh, he's made the first real impact, right? But it, it almost results in even worse. You can hear a, a hard orchestral tom hit, Wah, boom. Um, and I did that just um, to to make a bit a bit more impact, a bit more umph. And plus, we're ushering in the next loop, the next the next pass that he goes around, and we're raising the tension because you can see it in his face. Like he starts to become more and more panicked as he figures out figures out not only what's going on, but that he might be trapped. Boom, right? All right. So it's it's panic now. He's, I've got like string and flute runs, and it's very busy. Um, also, something I did that I think is kind of cool with with the Lydian motif. Boom, 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 boom. One, one five, one four. Um, I actually shifted the mode underneath it. Um, so now that the half steps are where four and five was, it would be three and four. But I keep the same intervals, and it makes it sound it's the it's the same motif, but it makes it sound kind of eerie. Listen for that in here. Uh, and also, it, it dances around in the strings a little. Backing up, I'm sorry. All right, so it wakes up panic. Bum bum bum. See, it doesn't sound as magical now, does it? Bum, 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 bum. I'm just raising the stakes here. Okay, so this next one, um, I, I have set expectations for the audience. Each pass, there is music, and it's raising the tension. Now, I want to keep raising the tension, but I wanted to do it even more effectively. They're expecting music, and I don't do music. I just do an empty, hollow boom, boom, to, to kind of emphasize the seriousness of it. The panic on his face and, and um, misdirection, subverting their expectations, can have a uh, even more of an emotional effect than if I just turned the music tension up even more. All right, so I'm going to back up a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't want to oversell it. Right, so they're expecting music here. Right? All right, and I I do a little, little sound design with the click so, you, you know, it's the ticking of the clock. Just a quick... Uh, what is it? Brass cluster there, and and of course I mapped out the beats so I could put a more significant hit right there. And it, this is really cool. I'm I'm 
kind of proud of this. It's a simple, simple trick. It's just an, uh, an augmented scale. Let me turn this up a little bit. It's a flute going through chord tones, just an ostinato, and it's just major and then minor, major and then minor. Um, let me back up again so you can see that. It gets mad at me when I click somewhere else. Uh, I'm not gonna make it go all the way through. Listen to how, how mysterious and magical this is. So it was already a, an odd situation. I think this adds mystery to the mystery, adds magic to the magic, right? It's just such a simple trick. I'm, again, uh, major, minor, major, minor, and then I'm reinforcing it with some, some vibraphones underneath it. And then what I do here is I, I slowly change it to C Lydian again. I'm doing an ostinato over uh, the D chord. And now this is basically a needle drum again. I'm just setting the tone. Now we've heard this before, this kind of emotional piano with the, with the busy ostinato underneath. Now why did I go with that? Because it works. We've heard it before and it's effective. I'm not trying to re reinvent the wheel. Occasionally I'll reinvent the wheel, but no, not this time. All right, so um, again, I have the ostinato that creates movement and it creates mystery and magic at the same time. And then the ostinato morphs into uh, um, kind of a more emotional and in, in kind of a I don't know, happy, ethereal way, a kind of a beautiful way. And it keeps that, it, this is where it starts to, to, to morph. Let me back up a little bit. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then change it to D Lydian. And then that busyness, which is just the block chords underneath, it's simple, but effective. That ostinato also helps kind of facilitate that he's thinking and, you know, something is still happening. There's a stirring about it. See, he's figured it out. And I close on the motif to um, wrap it up nicely. And I, my, uh, if you notice, I played the motif slightly slower to give it just a little bit more a little bit more nuanced mystery okay um so that is my rescore called uh, destiny i hope you guys liked it this is the first time that i've done a walkthrough like this um obviously i didn't get really into much of the music theory or the chord choices or the nuts and bolts of anything i think i would like to do that but i don't know if people are hungry for that, if you are hungry for it, let me know. And I'll make a, a painfully long video going through all the music theory and, uh, and we can nerd out. Um, you guys be brutal. Tell me the truth. Was this good or was it dog shit? Um, is this something that, that helps you? Is it something that might, I don't know, was there anything here that you could add to your tool bag? Was there a perspective that was shared? Something it, it, is, if I made more of these is what I'm really asking. If I made more of these, would you watch them? Let me know. Uh, if yes, then, you know, tell me yes. If, if no, you know, uh, be mean, be nasty about it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, I'm Nicholas Patrick. Thank you for uh, sticking with me. If you did, uh, we'll see you next time.